Hi, my name is Ada Wells, and welcome to the Pro Balance PT Podcast and to Pro Balance Physical Therapy and Pilates. This is our studio here in Alameda, California. And what I'd like to do is give you um, a sense of, if you've never taken a Pilates class before, a little bit of what you might expect and, um, and, and just a little bit of advice so that it might make it a little bit easier for you. Now, first and foremost, I usually recommend, if you have never done Pilates before, to do a session privately with either a physical therapist or a fitness Pilates instructor, um, particularly if you may have um, an area of your body that has had a history of being a little irritable, like maybe you have a low back that um, can get cranky at times. It's important that you do have somebody, you know, be able to look at your specific problem because not all, all you know, back pain is, is all going to have the same modification. And that's the thing that really sets us, sets us apart here at ProBalance is that um, all of our Pilates instructors are comprehensively trained. Um, all of our um, physical therapists are all, once again, comprehensively trained. And so we're able to take a look at what you have going on. And the, the fitness teachers and the physical therapists can communicate with each other, speak the same language. And, um, and if, there is, if there are modifications that need to be made, it's something that we're used to doing all the time and, and, um, and within a multi-level class. That's important, especially for not only the client to know um, that they need to modify, but also for the teacher to be able to do so as well. So that's always just a big plug for making sure that you um, do, um, if you do have something that's more specific or you've never done Pilates before, I, I would highly recommend that. Now we also do have some introductory classes that we offer a couple times a month um, at a very low price just to give you the basics. And I'm going to try to do a little bit of that here. So if for some reason you just can't get in here to do it, um, it doesn't fall in the time you can, but you're interested in starting a class, uh, this will help you give, give you some information so that you um, do have a clue when you come in. So what I'm sitting on right here, this is called the Reformer, and this is typically the most common piece of apparatus um, that we'll have our classes on when it is an apparatus class. Um, we do have towers on our, um, our particular machines. And so um, there are some exercises that we will incorporate with those towers, but for the most part, um, you'll see classes listed as reformer classes, and that will probably be the, the primary um, apparatus. Um, just to give you a little bit of just some nuts and bolts, we have a foot bar here. These foot bars um, can slide forward and back, and this is important because you know different people are different sizes, and, um, and so we want to make sure, and, and this is what the teacher helps you do, is to make sure that you have this bar set up correctly for your body. Um, so that you're aligned most efficiently for, for you to be able to do the exercises that she's going to you know, ask you to do, he or she. Um, there's also, um, within this you have a, there's a headrest that um, has three settings. It can be up high, middle, or all the way flat. And if for some reason somebody has, say, a very kyphotic or very forward um, sort of shoulder posture, they're very rigid in the thoracic spine, we can build this up. And even with some of our prenatal um, clients who are, it's not, appropriate for them to be um, supine or lying flat on their back. We actually have special wedges that we can place here so that the person can still go through and do the exercises, but their body is placed in a position that's appropriate for them. Um, there's also these um, straps here, we call them straps, and there's, there's double loops, so there's a long loop, typically the feet will go in the longer loop, and the shorter loop, um, typically the hands go in there, but there may be some exercises where we um, will ask you to go into the longer or the shorter loop. And there's um, a little stand here um, at near the shoulder rest, this is the shoulder rest, um, where those can hang on very, um, very nicely. Okay, so we have that set up. And then the resistance um, is via springs. And I have my hand down here in the well. If I took all the springs off, you can see, whoo, this thing really moves. So depending on the amount of resistance I place with the springs, and the springs are different color, red is kind of, I, I, I call red one unit, um, a blue is a half of a red, and a yellow is like a third of a red. So, um, you know, this is where typically the, you know, the instructor will, will um, you know, may either <coughs> direct you to be able to change a spring, or usually if it's your first time, they will come in and, and, and help you with that. Um, and, and just take note that sometimes, w one, of the, one of the nice things about a reformer class or working on the apparatus is that the apparatus provides you either resistance or assistance. It can, you know, just because of the levers and how um, everything is moving, um, you know, sometimes people, they, they, their first experience with Pilates is doing a mat Pilates in a gym with, you know, 30 other people. The problem with that is that there's a lot of things that can go wrong um, when it's just you against gravity. And if you haven't had any movement training to, you know, the, the, the teacher may be a wonderful teacher and is telling you what to do, 
but if you don't have an, a, a, an idea of where to exactly put your body, um, and you do you, you do this long lever movement, um, and you don't have the strength and stability to hold that, that can create some discomfort. It may not be pleasurable. It may hurt. Um, and that's not necessarily what we're going for. The nice thing with being um, here in a smaller class, there's six reformers, so this is the, the max we will have in a class. Um, you know, you're, you're on a piece of equipment, like I said, that can be supportive. But that being said, if you're somebody who's an athlete, um, we can really, you know, increase or decrease the springs because, once again, sometimes decreasing the springs actually makes the exercise harder depending on what position you're in. Um, it's not just on your, our backs that we're doing exercises here, which I'll give you a, a quick example. So, um, so anyway, so it's, it's really, I tell people, it's like if, if you had a negative experience with Pilates in the past that, and it was because you were doing a mat class with 30 other people and you've never done Pilates before, give it another chance because that probably wasn't the best place to, to start it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you a few little examples um, of some ex basic exercises you might find in um, just a typical basic class. Um, and, and first of all, mounting the reformer. Um, I tell people, you know, get yourself all the way at the edge so you literally have like a butt cheek hanging off the edge. And you're going to kind of allow your body just to lie on its side like your little teeter-totter. And I like to take a hand, place it here so that you don't impale yourself on the way down. And then you'll go ahead and you'll come into your um, supine position. So this is on your back. Now, while you're on your back, um, you may also um, notice, once again, there's this headrest so we can place it all the way up or down depending on what's comfortable for you. And now, now that we're lying down, there's some people who have a tendency for the ribs to flare. And you might hear the instructor say, drop the ribs. And what we're trying to do is create an alignment where the ribs stay stacked right on top of the pelvis. If we were to imagine that we were upright, I'm going to push this all the way out, um, and we were in an upright position, if your ribs are out like this, your spine is not in, a, in an ideal alignment. So we want to keep the ribs um, centered over the pelvis. Now the other mistake that I often see people do is they have this tendency to sort of over tuck. They've been told to flatten their back. And what we're not asking you to flatten your back. We're just asking you not to overly arch. Because if you flatten your back, that creates a lot of excessive tension as well. And that's not going to be um, ideal for creating efficient movement. So we might have you do a little like pelvic tilt, um, some pelvic clocks here, just to find where your spine can move. You settle into what we call our neutral spine, um, or optimal spine, I like to say. Um, those ribs are stacked over the, the pelvis open to the collarbones, long through the back of the neck, and your arms are at your side. And this is like a, not unlike doing a leg press type of exercise at a gym. So that would be something, you know, it's, which is relatively, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a fairly familiar exercise, something that you might have done before. But what we're watching for is notice that my legs are going all the way straight. I'm not locking them, okay, but I do want you to have controlled straightening and controlled unstraightening because in gait, when you're walking, you need to have that, okay? So I want to make sure that you have that control before we do anything where we're adding, like I said, speed or resistance here, okay? Now I might have you do this in a variety of positions. Guess what? When you're turned out and you're doing a squat, you need, this is a very functional position. You got to do this every time you get up, um, you get out of your car, okay? You've got to be able to um, have your, your muscles be able to work in a turned out position here, okay? So we might change the alignment of your legs. Then we can go on to the balls of the feet and work a lot on your ankle alignment and your foot alignment and come down and get some flexibility work, okay? So um, it's very important that you have good mobility in your ankles to be able to do a lot of um, weight-bearing exercises like running and, and squatting. If your ankles are stiff, um, this is going to really impede that um, and, and make it very difficult to keep good alignment. So, we might have you do a variety of exercises where you're actually um, creating some mobility, but at the same time, I tell people, if you're going to stretch something, you better strengthen it. So it's a really nice way to dynamically stretch uh, <coughs> those muscles of your ankles, as well as work on some ankle stability. And we might do anything for, you know, some people may be able to do some single leg work. We might add a little bit of coordination with it. So once again, in a course of a single class, you might have one person that's on their heel just doing a single leg press, if they can do that. You may have another person next to them who's more advanced who is able to go and do something dynamic with it, um, all the while maintaining their, um, their alignment. And like I said, depending on what the resistance of the spring is, this can be made more difficult or easier 
um, for the, the person. So we can also do um, some nice exercises for um, working on spine articulation, which is just the moving of the spine um, in a controlled manner. So we can do a bridge where we're peeling up, and we're trying to do this without moving the carriage, and then we go on down without moving the carriage. Now, ideally, I should have had my headrest all the way down with this. I'm not usually, usually giving a podcast at the same time as I'm exercising. Okay, so we can peel up. Now, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and I can push this carriage all the way out. And do I still have that control of the whole body and the whole system as they come back in? And then I've got to peel, 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 making sure I don't bring the shoulders forward with me all the way down. So this is an example of an exercise where we're working on now mobilizing the spine, working on control. If I have this really light, my hamstrings are going to have to work a lot more. Um, it's going to be much more difficult with control. Um, if it's heavier, I'm going to feel it much more in my legs. So it just depends, but it's going to be easier to move up and down without the carriage moving. So once again, I can, I can adjust that however I need to adjust it. Um, so I'm going to come up for a moment and do just a little change of spring. Okay, so we can do things with, um, with our arms. So kind of nice here. Um, I like to call this the zombie position. And we can float. So I'm making sure that the pelvis is stable, the ribs are down. We can float those legs up into what we call tabletop position. And then we're going to go ahead and just push straight down. Now, I always say this is, a, this is an ab exercise disguised as an arm exercise. So even though we are moving the arms and we're focusing on that good alignment, the fact that you've got to maintain your legs in this position is work. Now, some people may be here. Some people may be out here. There may be some people that might actually be all the way up and doing something else where they're, um, they're upright and have to do something coordinated. Okay, so that might be sort of, it, you might fall anywhere along the spectrum depending on the level of the class and where you are with regards to your own abilities. Okay, um, one of the funnest thing that people do, um, and we can do this all day, is working on something called feet and straps. And you notice how I just put my foot in there. I just place my foot in that long loop. I put a little resistance against that because that's going to be where I'm going to push off of. And then now I'm going to place my other foot in the loop. And now I'm in. Now, very important that I keep that pelvis in its neutral position. I'm going to fold from the hips and I'm going to bring the hips down. Now, um, <clears throat> what we're looking at here is that this, this core, the center position of, of your spine, is staying totally, is, is, is really still, it's relaxed, and we're essentially just doing all of our movement from the hip joint, okay? And this is what we do when we're, we're doing something called hip dissociation. Very important. If you have back pain, um, oftentimes people lose this ability to dissociate from the hips. So we might have you do some uh, just back and forth. We might have you integrate some circles of various sizes. And as I like to say, you only go as far out as you can control it, because if you're out here and you're, you're your uh, circles are called jerky, um, you're not going to do yourself any favors. You'll probably create more problems than good. So you can do um, circles in both directions. Once again, being able to master smaller circles before you go into the larger circles. And this is where your um, teacher will guide you. And we can even do some things where we're doing some frog presses. So once again, this idea of being able to maintain this, this control and alignment at the top, you know, and we can do just various things with single legs to challenge that depending on where the person is. And then coming out, I bend the knees. Notice how I'm not um, in the, <laughs> a lot of people like to come out and they're in this diaper change position, but no, that's not what we want. We want to take out a foot, find the foot bar, come down, and all the way up. Okay, so that's an example of some exercises that you might find where you're on your back. Um, there may be some things that you do where we work a little bit on some weight bearing um, of, the, of the upper extremities. So um, an exercise called quadruped, I'm going to just lower the foot bar for a moment, is you might be on your hands and knees. And in this particular case, very important that you're, I, I tell people it's like you have a little, um, little eyeballs on the front of your, um, your elbows. You want to make sure that your little eyeballs or your little faces in front of your elbows look at each other so that they're, we're not just basically locked out and now we're, we're not putting any sort of um, stability into our shoulder girdle. So we want to make sure those eyeballs of the elbows look at each other. You're creating width across the back and making sure your head stays in line with your spine. And then from here, we can do just a little kind of back and forth motion of the reformer. 
Now, we, before we do this, we would also want to make sure that our spine is, is in its um, optimal position. Once again, we're not allowing those ribs to be dropped, but we're keeping them like there's a little sling underneath. Okay? So here's that hip dissociation. Essentially, it's like what's doing that squat, except for now um, the spine is, is, doesn't have the feedback of the carriage, and you're just moving the legs back and forth. And this is coming from core control. If I lighten my, my springs, this is going to be more difficult. Okay? I can work a little bit on the shoulder girdle. And this is great to do for people who've had a recent shoulder injury or who have um, sort of issues with um, kind of chronic shoulder girdle issues. Um, it, it's a really safe position to be able to get a lot of feedback for the shoulder joint. Okay, and then we can add just various um, amounts of coordination to it. So this might be, and, and you know, and you can, you can make this as difficult as you want. I mean, the, the instructor can go one hand. The instructor can go opposite arm, opposite leg, and you've got to be able to control it. So there's just different ways that you can, once again, take a very simple exercise within that class environment, and your skilled teacher will know how to uh, make sure that everybody gets the appropriate amount of, of challenge for their body. Okay? Uh, last thing I'm going to show you is just, uh, just a standing exercise. Um, it's one that um, is one of my favorite. And it's, it's, it just allows you to be able to um, create just that, that integration of the whole body while actually getting some, some mobility in the hips. So this is called, the, the, this is the hip stretch series, but we're going to start with a little scooter motion. So I tell people, you want to make sure your head lights to your pelvis are facing straight ahead as you're able to go ahead and reach that leg straight out. Now if a person goes here and you see all of this sort of drop in the pelvis, um, you're not getting the mobility and you're not necessarily creating, like here I'm using my glutes to help um, extend my hip back. Um, if, you, if you just kind of go down and allow your body to sink where it wants to go, you're not going to get the movement from the right place. So um, you might start with that simple movement um, of just kicking out. Then we might go ahead and go down to what I call the straight split motion. And while we do this, we're still keeping our hips straight ahead. A lot of people will want to rotate their hips, and that's because, once again, it's the body wants to go to the path of least resistance. Um, all the while, while we're doing this, notice that I don't have my head down, and my head and my neck and my, my organization of my upper body should be ideal. So even though this is an exercise where we're stretching out the lower body, it's really um, putting it all together. So I'm weight-bearing into my arms. I've got to know where it's at. And I can, I can integrate all sorts of rotation, and I often do. Um, within that basic exercise in my more advanced classes. So hopefully you at least got a little bit of an idea of the types of exercises you might see in a, in a reformer class. There are numerous things you can do, standing, sitting. Um, I didn't even come close to it because it would be a 30-minute video um, if I just showed you one of each, um, and that, would, that wouldn't even cover it. So there's just various, there, there's many variations. Take-home message here, though, is making sure if you do have a, an issue um, and you've never done Pilates, probably best to first um, see somebody privately to make sure that they know what you have going on. You get a little bit of that education of where your body needs to be and where you need to work a little harder um, in terms of the cues so that you're able to, when the, when the, when the instructor tells you what, what you're going to be doing, you have that sense of what, what you need to be doing um, within that motion. It's all about quality, not about quantity. and so. That's the take-home message here. So we hope to see you in some of our classes, our intro classes, or um, working with you one-on-one. -on -one. And until then, um, we'll see you next time.